Welcome to Behind the Bars TV, where today we dig into the chilling life of one of America's most notorious serial killers, Ted Bundy. In the late 20th century, different states of the USA encountered the reign of terror of Ted Bundy. He was a serial killer in the 20th century and is considered to be one of the worst of his time. He often used his charm, faked disabilities and impersonated people like cops and firefighters to gain his victims' trust before he violently turned on them. He killed many women in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah and Florida between 1974 and 1978. 13 young women were murdered over a period of six months, their bodies dumped in hilly areas of Los Angeles. The story of Ted Bundy is both tragic and fascinating. From his promising beginnings as a law student to a bloodthirsty lust killer responsible for upwards of 30 deaths. Yes, I intend to complete my legal education and become a lawyer and uh, be a damn good lawyer. And then I have a great model over here. So uh, I think things are going to work out. That's about all I can say. We've put together a biography of the most prolific serial killer in history. Prepare yourselves for an unsettling journey through his twisted mind and heinous crimes and eventual capture. To understand how a seemingly ordinary man could transform into a monster, let's start with Bundy's upbringing. Theodore Robert Cowell was born to an unwed mother, Eleanor Louise Cowell, on the 24th of November 1946 in Burlington, Vermont. He was born out of wedlock. His grandparents took as their son to avoid shame and Louise lived with his sister. Bundy had a hard childhood. Samuel, his grandfather, was reportedly an abusive person and had a streak of violence. In his early childhood, Theodore started being alone, isolated and disconnected. He was considered a well-behaved child, though extremely introvert and shy. Louise later married Johnny Bundy in 1951 and Johnny adopted Ted after marriage therefore becoming Theodore Robert Bundy. Reports suggest that Ted never bonded with his father or siblings and lacked social skills. Ted Bundy met his first girlfriend while he attended the University of Washington. Diane Marjorie Jean Edward is reportedly Bundy's first girlfriend and the latter has confessed that she had a lasting impact on him. She came from a wealthy family. From a young age, Bundy was embarrassed by his family's lack of money and working class status. To gain the approval of her parents, Bundy did several things. He applied to a few law colleges and also started working for the Republican candidate. The relationship came to an end as she found his lack of realistic long-term goals frustrating. This rejection is what many psychologists have recognized of one of Bundy's main urges to kill. If you line up all his victims, they are pretty much a carbon copy of his ex-girlfriend. Bundy is reported to then have been hunting, kidnapping and murdering women across the state. After that, Bundy had long-term girlfriends, a lot of young women, and also got married after going to death row. He and Caroline Boone had a daughter named Rose Bundy after getting married in a court trial. Bundy's reign of, ter reign of terror began while he was living in Seattle in the mid-1970s, between 1974 and 1978. During this period, several women vanished without a trace. He tended to prey on young women and attractive college women, first near his home in Washington, then moving to east to Utah, Colorado, and finally to Florida. Bundy was able to murder scores of women this way, he typically strangled and bludgeoned his victims as well as mutilating them after death. He then prolonged the events by returning to visit the corpses as their dump sites or even taking them home to gain further physical gratification. In some cases he even shockingly displayed their decapitated heads in his apartment and slept with their corpses until putrefaction made it unbearable. The horrific crime scene photos provide a gruesome account of the atrocities and the true evil of the notorious serial killer. In the last 10 years, murder up 62%, rape 116%. Following is a light timeline of Bundy's confirmed brutal crimes, his two escapes from police custody, and how he was brought to justice in Florida. 
Bundy's first known victim was Linda Ann Healy. The 22-year-old woman was abducted from her basement bedroom in King County, Washington in February 1974. Her skull was later discovered by authorities around the Taylor Mountain area. The same year of Healy's abduction and murder, Bundy moved to Salt Lake City, Utah for law school. While the enrollment was brief, the move allowed Bundy a fresh territory and victims. He broke into the apartment of 18-year-old Karen Sparks and attacked her. After beating her with a metal rod and brutally assaulting her, Sparks remained in a coma for two weeks. During the same period, Bundy took a hiking trip to nearby Idaho. While in Idaho, Bundy strangled two unidentified women. He would kill again in months later when he kidnapped and assaulted 16-year-old Nancy Wilcox in Holiday, Utah. Police were unable to ever recover Wilcox's remains. Following the slaying of Wilcox just two weeks later, Bundy struck again. After visiting the Salt Lake City pizza parlor, 16-year-old Melissa Smith was abducted. On October the 27th, 1974, her strangled body was found dumped at Summit Park. Bundy's time in the Pacific Northwest resulted in the senseless and cruel murders of numerous women, including Donna Gail Manson, Susan Elian Rancourt, Roberta Kathleen Parks, Brenda Carroll Ball, and Georgian Hawkins. During the period of Smith's murder, Janice Ann Ott and Denise Marie Nasland were also abducted and died at Bundy's hands. At the time, Bundy drove a yellow Volkswagen Beetle, which was reportedly seen by witnesses around the area of their last known whereabouts. In others, he impersonated a police officer, such as the case of 18-year-old Carol Daronch. Trusting Bundy, Daronch agreed to get in his yellow VW Beetle. Luckily, the attempt failed and Daronch was able to escape Bundy. She soon filed a police report on the incident and gave a description of the attacker and his now infamous vehicle. Bundy was arrested on August the 16th, 1975, with bizarrely not for committing murder, but for traffic violations. Upon their oath, do present that Theodore Robert Bundy, on the 15th day of January 1978, in Leon County, Florida, did then and there unlawfully enter or remain in a structure located at 661 West Jefferson Street. However, when the arresting officer searched Bundy's car, he made some bizarre discoveries. The first was that Bundy's VW Beetle had no passenger seat. The second was that Bundy had a mask, crowbar, handcuffs, ice pick, and a piece of rope in his trunk. Even more incriminating was the same handcuffs had been used to kidnap Carol Deronche. Deronche testified Bundy was sent to trial for aggravated kidnapping. Bundy was found guilty and sentenced to one to 15 years in Utah State Prison. Bundy sensing the death row could be his eventual destination made a plan to escape. Ted Bundy broke out of jail not once, but twice, both in a span of six months. First, he acted as his own attorney for his trial, meaning he could wander around the courts without shackles and have access to the courthouse library to research his defense. Preliminary hearing on June the 7th, 1977, Bundy dressed himself in two layers of clothing and during a court recess, Bundy escaped out of the courthouse library window. He lasted six days before police found him. This time, Ted Bundy made his way to Tallahassee, Florida, and it was here that he committed his most ruthless and impulsive killings. Having been incarcerated for two and a half years, Ted Bundy's bloodlust was at an all-time high. It was now January 1978 and Bundy's last victim was killed in June 1975. Margaret Bowman, 21, was killed 15th of January 1978. Bundy assaulted Margaret Bowman with his weapon and strangled her to death. Lisa Levy, 20, killed on the 15th of John, January 1978. Bundy assaulted and killed Levy in the same manner as Bowman. He also bit off one of her Kathy Kleiner, 20, attacked on the 15th of January 1978. Bundy bludgeoned Kathy Kleiner with his weapon with such brutality that it left her jaw hanging off. Kleiner survived the attack. Karen Chandler, 22, attacked on the same day in 1978. Chandler and Kleiner were roommates and Bundy assaulted both of them at the same time. 
Chandler suffered a broken jaw, broken arms and four dislodged teeth but survived. On the February the 9th, 1978, Ted Bundy committed his known final murder. Bundy abducted 12-year-old Kimberly Leach from the grounds of Lake City Junior High School. With suspicions, the police were closing in on him. Bundy fled Tallahassee, Florida three days later after comm commandeering a stolen vehicle. Bundy panicked and attacked the officer and attempted to flee, but he was quickly apprehended. Authorities had suspicions that Ted Bundy might have been responsible for the G Omega mass attacks, as well as other murders across the country. It took several years for prosecutors to compile all of the necessary evidence to charge Bundy. The trial eventually took place in July 1979. Bundy confessed to more murders than even the police were aware of. In some cases, he applied makeup and washed the bodies before brutally violating them. On January the 24th, 1989, the execution drew crowds and media attention outside of the prison. Bundy's face was swollen grey and his eyes were red where he, when he was taken to the death chamber. As part of the process, when he had been asked for his last words, Bundy's voice broke as he said, please give my love to my family and friend. At the sentence in time, 2,000 volts of electricity surged through his body. Then the machine was turned off at 7.16 a.m. and was pronounced dead by the doctors on the 24th of January, 1989, aged 42. Now that is the story of Ted Bundy's reign of terror. Raising awareness about serial killers and the importance of vigilance, experts have defied psychopathy. So Ted Bundy is an absolute, or was an absolute maniac. But his legacy continues to captivate people from around the world. But thank you very much for watching this video. People let me know exactly your thoughts in the comments. And as usual, if you're liking the content, remember to like and subscribe.